Welcome back to another edition of Prep Picks Can Pick Em. Well, Scott, we have a lot of good games on the site this week. Uh, 14 games in total. We have the first half up here in the board right now. We're going to you know, make our picks. Go ahead and take a play with game number one. Well, you said a lot of good games. This is not one of them. JCA 3 0, St. Vider 0 3. Not much more to say about that, but JCA is going to score another 40 points and they will win easily. Last week, the Hill put up uh, 500 and you know, eight yards rushing, and they should get 600 this week. St. Vider, sorry. Not, the, not this week. How about playing Felice and Minooka, a couple one and zero teams, but one and two teams, but one and zero in conference. What do you think? Uh, I've been saying it for a couple weeks. The Indian Nation is not as bad as as the record shows. Playing for East, hey, be, be playing for North. Good win, but you know, program changing win, but not this week, guys. Minooka, Indian Nation takes it hands down. Minnesota's going to be fired up now coming home with the win. That, that's going to be the, some good home field advantage. Playing for these has good athletes, but minnesota has got some, some bigger inside, uh, inside play at the line of scrimmage, which will help them win this game, even though I think it, it, might, be, it might be somewhat close. It might be pretty close, but I think Minnesota's is going to go 2 0 in the SBC. Scott, since the first week when, when playing for South was 0 1 after Bolingbrook, I have picked against them. I really hope Ken Bublitz is not using me to fire his team up. Because, Coach, sorry, this week I'm picking for you. Uh, I think it's going to be a closer game, maybe, maybe than expected. But I, I think the uh, the Cougars are definitely going to roll over Romeoville. And close game, maybe through three quarters. In the end, the scoreboard will show the, the Cougars on top pretty big. Well, you know, since I have a five-point lead, 22-17 on you right now, I'm just going to keep picking the same teams you are. <laughs> you can't catch up to me that way. But uh, I actually think South's going to win this game. I really think it's going to be a one-score game. I think we're only going to prove that it can stay with teams losing two games by a combined, I think, 13 points. And South hasn't really rolled over the competition. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think South will prevail in the end. South's trying to rise again. In one that won't be a close game is Lockport and Joliet Central. Uh, we talked about it for, for you know every week. You know, Joliet Central doing the right things, great coaching staff, you know, great kids, good athletes, just not ready yet to compete in the uh, Southwest Suburban Conference. Uh, Lockport comes in after a tough loss to the Louise, they rolled the They didn't look like they were ready to compete last week. I mean, uh, they scored 40 yards of mm -hmm. offense. They should get that in the first drive of the game this time, which is which is good. It's good, some good medicine for Lockport. The Porter should, uh, should score early and often. But don't be surprised if, if Joliet Central does get on the scoreboard, though, this week and score a touchdown or two. Uh, another Joliet game, Joliet West, who, you know, they're, they're a lot better than their own 3 record shows. They said there's a lot of good games. I mean, what's going on? They're seeing 0 oh, 3, 3 0. Oh, Joliet I mean, West has found their way in, you know, into the red zone a lot. They keep fumbling the ball, interceptions. They can't get the ball into the end zone. This week, I'd be hard pressed to find them getting into the red zone. Uh, this Bolingbrook defense is, is one of the best you know I've seen it, it, this year. Um, they're gonna stop them. You know this game. This game might, might be between the thirties for 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 Joliet West. Bolingbrook wins this one in our route. Just really drinking that uh, Bolingbrook Kool Aid, but you know they are. They state champions. They do look good, Joliet West. So I, I think they have some athletes though that can that can be athletic wise with Bolingbrook. The size is still a little bit of a difference in that. And the skill level is a little bit different. That's why we'll never go win this one. Well, um, and, and, and team I think that's in their face, Bolingbrook, possibly in the Class 8A semifinal, because Downs Grove South of 3-0, going to line on 3. Uh, we all know Josh Williams. Um, they're not a one-man show, but they very well could be. Uh, is, is there any week he's not going to be one of our choices for Athlete of the Week? No, Downs Grove South. They don't blow out. Yeah, lying, uh, they're, they're going to come in and come out pretty fast. It's, it's interesting, though, Downer South, not much competition here at all so far this season, and I don't think it's going to get any much harder for them. So, down or south, the big question is will they be battle tested for the playoffs? That might be a future story we're going to talk about in a couple weeks. Now, the first of our actual competitive games, I won't say good, we have two, two, one of two teams here, but our first of our competitive games on the schedule this week uh, Lions traveling to Downers North. Uh, I know Downers North had, had a you know, bump in the road a couple weeks. Uh, I don't know, I, I think they're probably a better team than they showed. I'm going to pick the Trojans this week. Well, well, this is going to be our first differential. I think you probably figured that out. You tried to get a game on me here. But Lions competed with Downer South pretty well for three, three and a half quarters before Josh Williams took over that game. I think Lions is going to is going to win, even if they're playing at Downers North, and Downers North is an improved team from last year. I still think they're a little bit short, and they just don't have quite a, enough to get over the hump against Lions. Lions in this one, and, and, and a pretty good battle, I think. Let's take, take a break for a minute here, and we'll, we'll come back. We'll break down the second half of our 14 games again. Back for the second half of our, of our Pigs Kid Pick'ems. Uh, Scott, we got uh, seven more games on the slate right here. 
First one, uh, main east, uh, Gabe Corey's uh, troops are struggling up there, uh, up up there. Parker's, uh, how about how about them taking on Glenbrook North, south? Glenbrook, it, it, I think they're playing Glenbrook North. I think you wrote that around <laughs> wrong. It doesn't matter if they're playing Glenbrook North, south, uh, east, left. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to win the game. Um, just, yeah, GB, whoever, whatever GB it is. Wait, it whoever matter. it is, they're winning. I agree. Uh, what about Niles North at Maine South? Does Niles North have a chance? Their defense obviously is not bad. Can they uh, keep up with Maine South? You know, the, the Hawk offense is down this year a little bit. Uh, not quite doing as high power as they were last year, but no, Niles North can't, can't, can't hang with them. The Hawks will win that one pretty easily. They're still waiting for a game, Matt Alvedi breaks it off at 300 yards. I mean, he hasn't hit 200 yet. Right. I don't know if this one's the game, but I still think it's not going to matter because I think Maine South is going to score early and often for the win. Well, Niles West uh, hosting Highland Park. Um, I mean, you know, Niles West two and one record. They only lost an zero and two or two, the two nothing game. Um, to Niles North. Yeah, to, to Niles North, which uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think Niles West is gonna pull this one off at home against Highland Park. You know what? I don't know much about Highland Park, but I'm tempted to pick them because uh, I'm not too comfortable. I think it's a pretty weak two and one. Not to not, not to disregard uh, Niles West at all, but. The wins were not against top quality teams, and the loss was to a Niles North team, which that's certainly win. But Highland Park going three, that really scares me. I think I'm going to go with Niles West in this one, giving them the home field advantage. To go three and one, that's huge. It's huge. They need to win this game if they want to make the playoffs. All right. But you got an 0 3 team here. Kind of, how scared are they at home? So you got a home field advantage team. Uh, who do you like in this one? Well, I tell you, let's see who wins. who's going to win first, Notre Dame or Notre Dame? You know, the Fighting Irish, they don't look too good either. But uh, Leo, you know, Leo's got the better record. Let me tell you something. Leo's 3A. Notre Dame, not 3A. Uh, it, for, for Leo to come in and beat Notre Dame, that, that would be a devastating loss for Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame's going to rally the troops and get their first win of the year. Well, unfortunately, Scott, I think there's going to be devastation in Niles. Because I, I think Leo, oh, with a 2-1 record, I think Leo's going to come in and shock the dance. Wow, that, that would be quite a shocker. Uh, you like another... <laughs> what about this one? So I'm guessing you're picking uh, picking Westmont over Dwight here, huh? In this battle between uh, conference rivals. You know, Scott, I, I don't know too much about either team, but um, yes, I, I think the you know, the own three team here. Dwight's got to get a win this year. Um, they play some tough competition down there. You know, down down, down state. You're not picking Westmont the first two weeks. We have Westmont as our conference. Sorry, right? Westmont. Sorry, but I gotta go with Dwight on this one. I don't know why. Some some just tell me. Dwight's going to prevail here. Well, congratulations, Westmont. You picked against you last week, and they won, and I picked for you, and they won. So uh, I'm going to stick with Westmont on this one and watch the uh, watch them go to 500 this year and hopefully make the playoffs. So, uh, another team you know, that I'm going to pick against our, our local team is Bennett here. Uh, however, this would kind of make sense. Um, Bennett has to has to win this game. I just don't think it's going to happen. They have JCA come up next week. They have Carmel's on the schedule. It doesn't get any easier here for, for Bennett, but... I just don't think it's going to even get easier this week. I think Maris is going to have to win this one. I have to agree with you, Ben. It's a shame that they're uh, they're facing an 0-5 start, which just already makes them uneligible for the playoffs. But I think Maris is going to be too tough for them to overcome. I, I do think it could be a close game, but I think Maris is going to prevail. And so in our game of the week here, the one that you know, we're going to take a little more time to break down, uh, this is the game that, that you'll be at, Plainfield Central. 2-1, start of the season, 2-0, lost to Heartbreaker in Manuka last week, Plainfield North. One and two also lost a heartbreaker last week to Plainfield East. So, who do you like in the uh, in this battle of Plainfield? Well, this is gonna be a big game for both teams. This is a game where yes, Plainfield Central might have a better record, but I think both of them need to win for the playoffs. I really think the loser of this game is gonna be in big trouble for the playoffs, and also the winner still has a chance at a conference title because there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation in the SBC this year. So the winner of this game is still well on the way to try and secure a a, birth, a, a possible tie for the SBC title. So this is a really a big game, even even probably bigger if they than if they both were to one. Because right. we talked about you know three and zero against two and one, they're both in good shape. But now this this is kind of a do or die game. The question is which team is going to rebound better? Both teams were kind of taken taken out pretty good in their games to rival schools, Minooka for Plainfield Central and Plainfield East by Plainfield North. Who's going to rebound and show up and and, and come to play? This is a tough call for me. If this is really this, I think all the other games have been pretty easy yeah. for me to pick. This game, 
you just, I can't get a vibe on it. Can you get a vibe? Well, Scott, I got a vibe. I definitely have a vibe on this one. Um, my vibe tells me very simply. In my opinion, best team in this conference, one of the top two teams in the conference is Minooka. They, st they struggle, 0-2 start, to two really tough teams. So for Minooka to come take playful central to the woodshed, fine. They're, they're one of the top teams in the conference. Is Plainfield East one of the top teams in this conference? Not a chance. So for Plainfield North to get blown out the way, the way, the way they did to Plainfield East, I, I just see this one here. I see Plainfield Central lost to a, a way better team than Plainfield North did. I think Plainfield Central is a way better team than Plainfield North. John Jackson, Timmy Blake, come on, boys, bring it home for me. I'm picking the Wildcats. You know, you know what's really interesting now that I think about it is they're, they're crossing over these teams. Obviously it happened then in the other Plainfield South games too, but these two teams are the two losers of the teams that also meet Plainfield East and Minooka. So we'll kind of see which teams were better in that game. But I think, well, I think Minooka's going to be Plainfield East. I played Plainfield Central last two weeks, so I know Plainfield Central fans don't sit there and call me a traitor, you know, stay with the school there. But I think Plainfield North, they're, they're not going to have seven turnovers this week. Or six or seven turnovers. You don't think. I mean, the chances yeah. are that happening are very slight. I saw Plainfield, neither team's defense in the weeks I saw them were good tackling. Both teams struggle tackling. It's going to come down to who's going to tackle better. I think it's going to be the whole thing, execution, whatever. It's who's going to tackle better. I think Plainfield North's got a couple more athletes out there, and I think they can break free for the bigger plays more than Plainfield Central can. Playing at home, they need this game. They, they see the 1-2 and two record. They need this game. I think they're going to get it done. I think Plainfield North, this could be an overtime game. Like I call a couple weeks ago, I was almost right on. Yeah. I think this is definitely going to be a one-scoring game. This could be an overtime Timmy game. To be Blake, Jordan Ellingwood. Yeah, the this, this is going to be a fun game to watch. It's going to be really fun, I think. But that's that's going to be it for this week. You know, check back with us and see if we were right, wrong, and give us your predictions. And if, you, if you don't like what we said, right here, bottom of the screen, our email addresses, email Scott, and he'll yell at me. So. But yeah, you know, check back, and we'll be back again next week for some more coverage.